Okay, so, so a, a good way to do this is when you make the basic connections, sometimes it's good to use what, what, uh, what is known as the so what technique, technique. Okay, so after each connection you make between, say, feminism and the concept of property, ask yourself so what? And it came up in some of, some of, our, some of our discussion here uh, today. Someone will make a point and I would say, say more about that. Okay, what does the point you make reveal about law and its relationship to society. Bring the, bring the analysis alive by starting to look at those sorts of things. Don't get, try, try not to get trapped into just describing everything, just, just describing examples. Get into actually drawing out the, the analysis. Okay, um, I think it, it's also good to think about um, when you're planning for your, uh, for your exams, it's also to think about how you can draw in, I mean, with the concept of property, you can think about you know, uh, legal realism and tikanga. How, how could these issues, what would they say about the concept of property? How, how does legal realism relate to the property? How does legal realism relate to feminism? How does it relate to positivism? How does it relate to tikanga? And for each of those, how do they all interrelate and what are, the, what are the points of comparison and the points of difference between each, which are interesting to make, uh, that give you more insights into what, uh, what property is. Okay, so the last point I want to deal about is once you've done your relational analysis, once you've sort of, sort of turned through those issues, is thinking about how you write it up. You know, how do you actually get your thoughts <coughs> How do you get those thoughts onto paper? How do you get your higher order analysis into your essays? <coughs> so, first of all, just sort of determine your key relational points. Okay, so, so some of the relational points we picked up here was that there, is a, there's, there are different arguments that, that legitimize what property is. Okay, so that, that's a key relational point. Lead with that in your paragraph. Okay, and use it as your topic sentence. Okay, you're all familiar with the, with the academic paragraph. With the topic sentence, it's normally your first sentence in the paragraph. That's your main idea of the paragraph. It's your, it's your winning idea. Okay, it's your key point. And then the rest of the paragraph supports that topic sentence. Okay, so determine what that topic sentence is going to be going to be by doing your relational analysis beforehand, so that you lead off with a nice strong statement that clearly states to the marker what your position is. Then the rest of the paragraph build on that topic sentence. Okay, justify the topic sentence. If you say that there are various ways of legit legitimizing the concept of property, well, how are you going to show that in the rest of the paragraph? What kind of points are you going to use to link in to that? Okay, then you move on to your next paragraph. What's going to be your next relational point about how those things connect with the concept of property? And then start to feed in your support sentences on that as well. <coughs> okay, Mason, is there anything you would like to contribute? Oh, sure. What I really appreciate about the slide and the way Hamish has gone about explaining it to you, or this workshop on racial thinking, is this image. So if you were to think of this box as the notion of property, and then you have two people here who are considering, who are discussing property, and each one is discussing it from their own perspective. So all of a sudden you could see that you have <coughs> one concept that both people are working with, but how they see it is going to depend on their position, how they critique it. So this head is in fact larger than this one. This is a smaller head. And so you can imagine this one has a pointier nose and this one has a more curved nose. And it sounds silly, but the point is that there are differences in how they perceive it. 
And what I really appreciate about having these two faces is that you have two people looking at each other and having a conversation about it. And when answering questions in an exam about law <coughs> and society, you have to think of this in terms of a conversation. So Hamish's point earlier, one of the greatest weaknesses that students demonstrate in their tests is they have this desire, this commitment, this passion for describing things. Now imagine you're sitting there with someone and that person sits there and says, here, let me tell you about positivism. Positivism is a legal theory. It is a legal theory that holds that the law is made by the sovereign. According to, and that, that law has to have the correct pedigree, meaning it has to have been made with the right procedures. <coughs> positivism is amoral. You can imagine how you would have zoned out after the word positivism. <laughs> because it's not a conversation. <coughs> it's a description. It's an encyclopedic description. And it's not anything that anyone wants to read, certainly not lectures. So imagine yourself having a conversation. Discuss the concept of property and discuss the concept of property from the perspective of Twao and positivism. So it's all about property and it's about explaining property from these different perspectives. So then it was being pointed out that there was this idea of conflict. Well, of course there's going to be conflict. So everybody wants this, but not everybody can have it. Well, who gets to have it? Well, according to someone back here, rich white men get to have it. And according to someone else over here, this is based on timber that was stolen from the third world. So maybe they have a right to it too. So if you start thinking about it in these terms, in terms of a conversation, in terms of conflict, in terms of similarities and differences, if you operate with this image in mind, in how you go about answering the question, then your answer becomes a lot more textured. And I think that was the point that Hamish was really trying to make in the very beginning. Everyone was looking at this and someone says, okay, there are faces and there's a goblet. <coughs> and someone else over here pointed and said, you know, there's a conversation happening. And maybe that conversation is antagonistic. And maybe it's not. And someone else said, oh, well, there's colors. Right? Someone over here said, there's colors. Right, there's colors. And that means that even within a same perspective, people are going to have different views. And whenever you're going about answering a question, have this image in mind. And that that points to is the various layers that you can draw upon in answering the question. And so long as you stay at the first one, the goblet, and you know, a couple of heads. That is that, you know, we we're talking about the um, pre-structural, unistructural level of understanding. What Hamish was trying to get you towards was the relational, the fourth. And then people who are looking at this, right, and going into more depth, more detail, and describing the nose, you're getting into the extended abstract. You're being a little more creative than everyone else.